The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Or so a scholar in the mountains had told him. Surely the weapon that banished the lost gods could defeat the Emperor. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does, thought Renardo. On the other hand, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Lapino was no game changer, but could Renardo really leave an old friend to the Ravens? Ah, Lapino. Apparently, the mad rabbit had sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lapino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. The Ravens had figured out that Lapino was a rebel spy. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. Lapino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen the winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had, had everybody fled the ravens? Hmm. He had all the ingredients for a pretty nifty sword. Sharp? Check. Pointy? Check. Flexible? Check. What else do you need in a sword? The ravens had taken the town. Renato had seen villages emptied like this. All the people taken away to be sacrificed in the Emperor's secret rituals. Renata hoped the people were just hiding. The village looked so peaceful. Were the villagers hiding somewhere? Of course not. No matter how much he searched, he would only find ravens here. All he needed now was a workbench, and he could slot it into his gauntlet.
Every day he was getting better and better. everywhere. The advance guard. He'd better get moving. If they got to Lupino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even top spies like Lupino. Where had the mad rabbit got to? It was good to practice your moves, thought Renardo. Keeps you limber. Remembered knowledge needed to focus. Dirty and bloody. Renardo finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. Renardo recognized the cards. It was Lapino's favorite deck. Oh, I thought you were in danger. I am. The ravens are coming. Oh, the prison thing. Right, yeah, we see this guard owed me 53 ducats, so we made a deal. They're very reasonable people, actually, for weasels. Now, I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia. We capture Zenobia. We find out what she knows. And that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who happened to also be a deadly sorcerer, and, oh, his only daughter? Ah, that would be worth it. And it would be nice to see her. He'd always had a soft spot for her. And he felt sure she had one for him. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper. Even if he couldn't get the whole thing, it must have great power. Zenobia wasn't just the Emperor's daughter, of course. She'd been Renato's best friend in Swordfu school. And you're still mad for her, the rabbit reminded him. The rabbit had a point, and Renato had a feeling she'd want to see him again. Who knows what could happen between the two of them this time around? She knows all his plans chuckled the master spy. She won't give them up easily. <laughs> She'll tell the interrogators, all right, said Lapino. Taking her would change the game, all right.
The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renata shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Could he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Ice walls only let you through if they knew you were cool. So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lupino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lupino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong, thought Renardo. Go ahead. I'm sure you know better, said Lapino. Hey! Hey, a workbench! He could try out his new bling. is a swan. Could he join up? He dries his feathers. Renato slinked through Zenobia's ship, making no sound at all. Where were her guards? Finally, he reached her bedroom. She was curled up at her bed. Oh, he'd forgotten how beautiful she was. How sleek. How soft. He tapped her on the shoulder with his sword. She became smoke. And he noticed he had a blade to his throat. Stay a while. Heard a familiar voice. Did you really think you could capture me? Zenobia said as her ship lifted off. Now I just wanted some privacy, Renato said. Renato knew she still had feelings for him. Maybe he could just cut to the chase. But was timing right for that? I know how you feel about me, baby. I know you want to be with me, Renato said. What? The Emperor's evil, babe. I'm nice. Remember how nice I was back in school? You were an idiot in school. You said I was funny, said Renato, starting not to like how the conversation was going. The Emperor pulled me out of an alley. Don't tell me he's evil. Yeah, but did you ever wonder why? No, I didn't. Why don't you ask him? Well, because I know why. He wants to sacrifice you. You can tell him that when he interrogates you. Um, can't we just start this over? 
but Zenobia shut him in the hold of the ship. He had no one to explain anything to until he was brought to the Emperor's interrogators. After that, he was just screaming. He had tried something bold and paid the price for it. The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Could he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Dogglers. Bernardo hated dogglers. It was almost impossible to sneak past them. If one didn't spot you, another one would. So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Le Pino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lepino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong, thought Renardo. Oh! Go ahead. I'm sure you know better, said Lepino. Renato slinked through Zenobia's ship, making no sound at all. Where were her guards? Finally, he reached her bedroom. She was curled up at her bed. Oh, he'd forgotten how beautiful she was. How sleek. How soft. He tapped her on the shoulder with his sword. She became smoke. And he noticed he had a blade to his throat. Stay a while. Heard a familiar voice. Did you really think you could capture me? Zenobia said as her ship lifted off. Now I just wanted some privacy, Renato said. Renato knew she still had feelings for him. Maybe he could just cut to the chase. But was timing right for that? Did you ever wonder why the Emperor adopted you? And he told her why. His Imperial Majesty wanted to bring the lost gods back. They could make him immortal. But to seal the bargain, he needed a sacrifice. Someone who truly loved him. You're lying. She was furious. You can't prove that. I can. And so they set sail for the Nexus. Scientists at the observatory have resurrected one of his victims. Well, 
He's not exactly alive. But he can talk, and he can't lie. You took a big risk. You know, I could just cast a spell to make you tell me where the rebel base is. And you wouldn't consider that cheating? She frowned. Ugh, fine. Let's go get your witness. The rebellion had started after atrocities that the Empire hushed up. Renato had rescued a priest whose order had been massacred for one book. He had slept in a burnt village. Dead kittens and puppies had come to tell him what the Emperor had done to them. Smashing things was fun. His hook didn't break. Cool. Wish I could do that. Caught up with him. Don't you think I'd know if my father started practicing black magic? Why? Would you want to join in? Oh, no! No, I'd destroy his books and... Oh. All right, I suppose I wouldn't. She stopped, troubled. He ran on. There were stickers all over the platform for really hot lady foxes, with pictures and addresses and everything. <laughs> the scientists on this island had been investigating the Emperor's dark ritual on their own. They were neutral in the civil war engulfing the Empire, but they could see that the dark magics the old toad had loosed were changing the world. Renata hoped he and Zenobia weren't putting them in danger. Some people were just liable to explode if you upset them.
Renata felt a little better. The observatory was a burning hulk. Dead scientists and black feathers everywhere. The ravens had taken care to burn the reanimated witness to cinders. Zenobia stared around, shocked. The scientists had been neutral. They had no part in the rebellion. Take me to your council, she said, shaken. I have things to tell them. It was what Renardo had gambled on. The Zenobia would turn against her father once she knew his madness. But the rebel base was secret. Could he really risk taking the Emperor's daughter there, even if she did love him? Renata reached Lapino by far speaker toad. The one creature the Ravens had left alive at the observatory. I'll meet up with you at the base, Lapino said through the toad. Good thinking. Renato gave him the coordinates. There's a shuttle here I can uh, borrow. Renato found Zenobia in the chart room. I've been having awful dreams, she said. Dead kittens and oh, worse. I thought they were only dreams, you know. Why would anyone want the lost gods back? In those days, the favorite of a god could become immortal. She held herself and shivered. He wants to become an eater of souls. Well, I'm not afraid of dying. Just dying of boredom, <laughs> Renato said, but she didn't laugh. Silence fell as they flew towards the ruins of the city of Ubar, where the rebellion leadership was hiding. If Zenobia couldn't help them fight off her father, no one could. As they touched the ground, he could smell the ravens and hear their hungry calls in the distance. They're probably looking for me, she said. You go on ahead. She had that fiery look in her eyes that he'd always loved. It was a bit odd, though, how easy she'd been to convince. It was what he'd gambled on, but he'd expected more of an argument. She'd always loved to argue. She considered it the fastest way to the truth, maybe. She'd long suspected the truth. Sometimes all it took was taking the bandages from your eyes. That must be it, he told himself. That ought to be enough for a proper sword, he thought. Zenobia, Hypatia, the kid's mother. Renato had never thought he'd date a librarian. He'd always figured himself for the barmaid type. But then, he'd never figured the library of Ubar would have comic books, or that Hypatia would know anything about them. He missed her.
Zenobia had really turned, the war could soon be over. She could send orders to the fleet that would leave their defenses wide open. The rebels could sail right in and capture the Emperor. Victory, with not too many casualties. Fresh socks, thought Renato. Please be fresh socks. What were these poles, exactly? Parking meters from the time of the Lost Gods? If they didn't want their things broken, they really ought to make them stronger. They caught their breath under a ruined arch. It's beautiful, she said. This was the library of Ubar, he said. Your father's ravens thought they had an ancient book. She nodded. Was she crying? This was exactly what I wanted, Renata thought. To turn her to our cause. So why do I feel that something is terribly wrong? Because nothing ever goes this smoothly, is why. The platform used a hybrid propulsion system fueled by anti-gravity and wishful thinking. back to him. He wondered what he'd remember next. Looks could kill.
a lever? That was new. Most people still use doorknobs. The long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. He was on fire. So far, so good. feel more pain. Just a bit dizzy. Council toads swarmed around Zenobia, shocked she was there, shocked she had changed sides. Then the walls exploded. He heard toads croaking, Oh, the ravens! Blackbirds were pouring through holes everywhere. It's a trap! cried the council speaker. In the confusion, he saw flashes of magic. Then Zenobia being hustled off by Imperial troops. So... She had betrayed him after all. Renato ran for his ship. The Farfarer flew into the clouds, barely losing the Imperial Ravens pursuing him. The rebellion was lost, and he had lost it. There was nothing to do but find Zenobia and make her pay for her treachery. His heart ached. He still loved her, but he had trusted her and he had been a fool. She would be back at the fleet, gloating with her mad, bloodthirsty father. For all Renardo knew, she was helping him bring back the old lost gods back from their exile. Renato landed in the middle of the Imperial fleet. The rebels were losing badly. Without leadership, it was a slaughter. Renato felt strangely free, trying not to think about how he had lost the war, trying not to think about how he had loved Zenobia, blinded himself to her treachery. That's what it meant to be a hero, to keep on fighting after the most bitter of betrayals, to never know if you could trust anyone Cats, what a waste of fur. Ooh, what's there? Material to craft a spork or, or a sword.
could you hook? What had happened to Lepino? Had the mad rabbit fled to safety? Or was he forlornly carrying on like the few rebels were now to see here or there? Oh, it didn't matter anymore. All there was was slash and spin, parry and lunge, over and over as he fought his way across the fleet. All there was was finding the girl he'd once loved, who had used his love against him and putting as big a hole in her heart as she'd left in his. What did you do if one of these platforms stalled? Suddenly, Zenobia was there, advancing a Lapino. So the mad rabbit had survived. Save me, or I'm done for! Screamed Lapino. Zenobia turned, showing her teeth in a smile. You're alive! Renardo ran towards the witch. Lapino's the one who betrayed you! She shouted. He warned my father! Renardo sank his sword into the witch before she could fool him again. She stared at him. Heart broken. No! Lepino's the traitor! Then he felt a knife in his back. I'm afraid she's right, said the mad rabbit. Ain't I a stinker? Then the sun went out. Renato stared at the book. He was still alive, again, and still only flying away from burning Ubar. Had he lived that adventure, or only dreamt it? Had he really died? It felt so real, not like a dream at all. And he'd lost again. Oh, he hated that. But he had made different choices, and he'd lost in a different way. It was the book, wasn't it? Oracles showed you your destiny, but this... This was showing him different ways he could die miserably. Thanks a bunch, book, he thought. But these were destinies that he did not have to fulfill. But he'd learn another true thing. Lapino was a traitor. Renato had suspected there was something wrong with the mad rabbit. 
But now he knew there was malice behind his goofiness.